Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is John DiPietro, and I want to welcome you to this 016.com presentation on COVID, a topic that we know a lot about, we've heard a lot about, but we're hearing more and more about every day. And our special guest is Dr. Richard Ellison, an infectious, i got to say that the right way, an infectious disease doctor in Worcester at UMass Memorial Health. Doctor, welcome to the 016. Oh, thank you for the opportunity to talk with you. Yep. Doctor, you know what? I don't think there's a person alive today that hasn't heard the word COVID, but there's a new word that's attached to COVID that is becoming more and more popular, and that's variant. And uh, I think we've had a couple different versions of it, if you will, but the variant that we need to um, be looking out for now, tell us a little bit about the uh, the traits of that and how people can um, be aware of it, doctor. Yeah, so uh, to a certain extent, this is a COVID is caused by what we call a coronavirus, which is a virus that can be associated with similar to, vir to viruses which cause the common cold. And it's got several cousins which do cause the common cold. The reason we have the common cold and people keep getting it is these viruses have a, uh, they have one particular protein on the surface, they call it the spike protein, helps them bind to our cells and cause infection. And they can keep changing this spike protein very quickly. Uh, and it keeps evolving so that every time so, you know, someone gets a chance to find out how to fight it off, the virus modifies this barrier, the, the spike protein a little bit, and it gets past all the antibodies we develop. Hmm. And so this is, it keeps evolving, and we will expect this virus to always continue to evolve. Hmm. No, when you say all always. Time, yeah. When you say always, doctor, put a put a um, put a time frame on the term always. I mean, the rest of our lifetimes, or or five years, three years, whatever. I think that this we actually have four cousin viruses, which call, you know, all called coronaviruses, all have spike proteins. Uh, every year, we have seen one of these common cold uh, variants viruses come up and spread for a year. It goes away and it's replaced. It comes back two years later. I think that's what we're going to be seeing with the COVID-19 uh, coronavirus, that this will be something we can see coming back again and again. It, a seasonal type thing, like like the flu would always be a winter type thing, or or will it come at various times of the year, doctor? If it acts like the other ones, this will still evolve into something which is going to be seasonal. Uh, most likely, most of the time, the season is the end of October till early December is when we see the most common cold infections due to coronaviruses. And we could eventually hope that, that this virus will get a little bit milder in terms of the disease it causes, but will probably become something we see every year. Okay. How about symptoms of the current one? What should people be looking out for if they've got certain symptoms? The majority of the time, this is evolving into something which it causes more of a head cold and that the virus is spreading and it's growing in the nose and causes most of the symptoms in the nose. People are caused, causing uh, nasal congestion, feel like they have a bad cold most of the time. It still has the ability to grow in the lungs. Uh, and that was what was different from it before from what was being seen from the other common cold. The other common cold viruses were not getting into your lungs and growing there and causing pneumonia. Uh, this is as this virus has been changing to make it easier for it to spread from person to person if it's in the nose than in the lungs. Uh, but it's still in some individuals is causing bad lung disease and pneumonia. Hmm. Now, um, how about the severity of this current strain? And can we expect that the DCU center would turn into a field hospital again in the, in the winter time? No, I think the really good news is that we are seeing in overall, in general, we are seeing milder cases. Uh, not 100% of the time is it milder cases. So uh, at, at UMass, we've seen a five-fold increase in the number of employees getting COVID every day uh, between, when we look at how the number of people had COVID in early July, for example, you know, one to two per day. Now it's about you know 10 to 11 of our employees coming down with COVID among 10 to 12,000 individuals. So not a lot of people overall, but five fold more. 
when we see people in the hospital, it's about maybe about twofold more. So, uh, and very few people are going to the intensive care unit. Back in 2020, the intensive care unit was filled with people with COVID. So we yep. don't see that anymore. Okay. So it's wilder than that. Yep. The controversial question is masks. You know, there are studies that say waste of time. There are studies that say it saved lives. Um, I understand UMass has put a mask policy back on into all the campuses. Is that correct? Yes, we have. That's um, for visitors as well as staff. So we we encourage, we're encouraging visitors to doing this and for and having staff do it whenever they're having a contact with patients. Masks serve two purposes. They do two things. They protect you from getting it, and they also protect you from giving it to someone. We talked about a mask being source control. So if someone is you know, has gets COVID, you know, when they get an initial infection, often for 12 to 24 hours, they don't have any symptoms, but they are breathing the, vi the virus out. If they're wearing a mask at that time, the mask is gonna capture it. Gotcha. They're not gonna give it to someone else. So gotcha. we're, we feel it's important to help protect patients in the hospital. Okay. And the other controversial question, uh, again, two camps on this, um, definitely saves lives or definitely only the drug companies made money on it, and that's vaccinations. Um, what is the current thought process about the new vaccines that are coming out? Well, what we've seen before, what we saw in the past was these vaccines protected people from dying. They protected people from being going into the hospital the follow-up data for the vaccine, which was used last winter, the bivalent vaccine, which had the old original vaccine plus a, a newer version strain added to it, that also protected people from going being in the hospital. We have data that also protects you from getting long COVID, uh, where people have persistent symptoms and feel tired and washed out and fatigued for months after that. All of that seems to be we show evidence that that is less likely if someone gets the vaccine. So I think it's a real benefit for anyone who does not want to get any of those symptoms of you know being going in the hospital doing this to think about getting the vaccine. Okay. So besides take two aspirins and call me in the morning, your um, suggestion is to consider masking and consider vaccines as well. Yes, and also consider this in terms of this. Consider this for yourself and look into your family if you're going and if you're a young parent and you're, you know, you're having to rely on grandmother to do a child care for your four and five year old, and you don't want grandmother to get the COVID by getting COVID yourself, having your children immunized. You know, it's not going to provide 100% protection, but it's going to decrease the amount of time risk that they have COVID and the amount of time they're shedding virus and potentially giving it to someone else. Great. Dr. Richard Ellison from the Infectious Disease Department at UMass Memorial Health. I want to thank you for your time. Let people know that you're watching this on the 016. Have a great day, doctor. Thank you so much. Thank you again for allowing me to speak with you. Thank you.